All right, class. So last time we talked about double replacement reaction. And I'm not gonna go over it. Make sure you watch that video carefully before you watch this one. So just really quickly, the double replacement reaction. How do you know you have a double replacement reaction? When you have two ionic compounds. And what's gonna happen is ionic compounds are going to switch partners. We're good so far. Just as a reminder, again, when you have an ionic compound, you have a metal and you have a non-metal. The metal has to come first and then the non-metal after that. And we also said when you have a double replacement reaction, uh, there are two types of reaction you can have. You can have a precipitation reaction. We call it PPT, a solid is formed. Or you can have an acid-base neutralization reaction. We talked about it last time. Okay. Now, we want to continue and learning how to finish the double replacement reaction that we started last time. So, one of the ones that we did, again, you, you know the first part, was barium chloride plus sodium sulfate. Okay? So, we last time, we did this, and you were able to write the products. I have two ionic compounds. When I have two ionic compounds, what's going to happen is they are going to do a double replacement reaction to switch partner. Again, we did this one last time, so I'm going to go a little bit fast on this one. So, the way to switch partner, what's going to happen is in is with in is, out is with out is. Barium is going to leave Cl, it's going to go and hang out with sulfate. So I'm going to have barium sulfate. And the key is when you have new partners, you have new charges, so you need to rebalance it. That's the key. So I want to rebalance the charges over on the right side. So barium, group 2A, has a plus 2. Sulfate, polyatomic ion, has a minus 2. This is already balanced. Now Cl is going to leave barium, it's going to go hang out with sodium. But when I come over here, I have to write the metal first and then the non-metal. Now sodium group 1A has a plus 1 charge, Cl uh, halogen has a minus 1 charge. So this is already balanced. We talked about it last time. I am not taking the 2 over here and the 2 over here and taking it to the other side. Why not? Because the 2 is there because Cl is hanging out with barium. When Cl has a new partner, you move on. You rebalance the charges, right? The two is just there because of barium. New partner, you rebalance the charges. The same as here. The two is here because of sulfate. But now that sodium has a new partner, I have to rebalance the charges. So the other thing I really need you to remember that is that balancing charges is really key. Balancing charges is really key. So I need you to remember these two things. What an ionic compound is and balancing charges is a key. Okay, and then the last thing that we said we should do, you should um, make sure the equation is balanced and we did this last time to balance this equation. Now, what we did, we added two over here. All right, beautiful, okay. And I'm going to erase these two so we have this nice equation. Now, what we call this, and we did this last time, we call this molecular equation. Molecular equation. We call this molecular equation. Now, here's the thing. Barium chloride and sodium sulfate are two white solids. If I add these two together, what do I have? A mess. If you add salt and sugar together, salt and sugar are two white solid. If you add those two together, what do you have? You have a mess that you don't know what to do with. The same here. Barium chloride and sodium sulfur are two white solid. I add them together, nothing will happen. I just have a mess. I don't know what to do. What you need is water as a medium to make these reactions go. Because if I add these two solids together, nothing will happen. So I need water. I need water for this reaction to go. Because I need water for this reaction to go, because these reactions are happening in water, what I need to do, I need to look at each compound and see what happens to it in water. So I have to look at each compound and see what happens to it in water. So what do I need to look at? I need to look at solubility rule. Exactly. Take out your solubility rule for me. Here is the solubility rules, okay? So again, because we need water as a medium to make this reaction go, 
Nothing happens if there is no water. We need water for this reaction to happen. We are going to look at this to see what happens to each one in water. Barium chloride, look at the solubility rules. Tell me, is that going to dissolve or not dissolve in water? Soluble or not soluble? I look at over here. I have no rules for barium, but we have a rule for halogens. Chloride, bromides, and iodide are soluble, except if it's next to copper 1, silver 1, gold 1, mercury 1, and PV plus 2. Barium is not one of these. So this is soluble. If it's soluble, it's going to break up into ions. If it's soluble, water is going to break them up into Ba plus 2 and 2Cl minus. A couple things to, to remember. So again, this is soluble in water, and this is going to break up and it's going to dissociate into ions. Because, you said over here, based on the solubility, if they are soluble, if they are soluble, it will dissociate and break into ions. And remember, ions have charges, so you have to put the charges. Putting the charges is key. Putting the charges is key. Don't forget to put the charges. Okay. Now, I put 2Cl because when this breaks up, you end up having 2Cl, right? Now, sodium sulfate, is that going to break up in water or no? Is that going to be soluble in water or no? You don't even, you notice, you notice, you notice right away because sodium is group 1A. Every time you see group 1A, remember, all 1A and ammonium are soluble, no exception. So you go, yes, this will dissolve in water and it's going to break up. When this breaks up, how many sodium do you have? You have 2 Na plus and SO4 minus 2 because you are going to break up into ions, right? Okay, sodium is plus 1, SO4 is minus 2. Don't forget that. Now, when you break it up, you have 2 sodium and you have 1 sulfate. Again, sulfate is a polyatomic ion. That's going to keep it together, right? And you keep it together. All right, barium sulfate. Look at the solubility rule. Is that going to break up or not break up? I have no rules for barium, but I have rules for sulfate. Sulfates are soluble, except next to copper 1, silver 1, gold 1, mercury 1, PV plus 2, barium. Ah, so if sulfate is next to barium, that would make it to be insoluble. So yeah, this one, I'm going to keep it together is not going to break up. Next one, NaCl. Is it going to be soluble or not soluble? Tell me quickly. You're going to say yes because sodium is group 1A. Beautiful. So it's going to break up into ions. Now you have two NaCl. So when everything breaks up, you end up with two sodium and two Cl because you have two NaCl. So I'm going to end up with two Na plus and two Cl minus. Okay. What we call this we call this total ionic equation. We call it a total ionic equation. All right, we're almost there. Now, the next thing we're going to look at, we're going to find the spectator ions. Spectator ions are the ions that look exactly the same on both sides. They broke up, but they didn't find anyone. It happens. That's okay. So they broke up, but they didn't find anyone. They have to look exactly the same on both sides. What are they? Look at, I have here, I have 2Na+, 2Na+, that's my spectator ion. You're going to cross it out. What else? Help me out. 2Cl-, 2Cl-, my spectator ions. I'm going to cross out my spectator ions. The last thing we're going to do, we're going to rewrite the rest of them. Ba plus 2 plus SO4 minus 2 goes to barium sulfate. Now what we call this, we call this my net ionic equation. Now when you have your net ionic equation at the end, I want you to write down the phases, okay? So at the, and it's okay for me if you don't write it for molecular ionic, but at the end you should definitely do it. So barium plus 2 that is going to get an aqueous, right? Because it's dissolved in water. This is dissolved in water. This is did not dissolve. So that would get a solid. And this is our net ionic equation. Yeah? Okay. Nice job. Nice job.
Okay, next one. Let's do a bunch of these together. All right, so let's do our next practice problem. The next one is going to be lead to nitrate. Make sure you still, you got your naming down for ionic compound plus potassium iodide, okay? So the same as before, what I have, I have two ionic compounds. When I have two ionic compounds, that's a double replacement reaction. And we go in is with in is, out is with out is. Again, and we did this one last time. So I'm going to go over a little bit quicker. Now what that means is the PB is going to leave the nitrate, is going to go and hang out with iodide and nitrate is going to leave PB and is going to go and hang out with potassium. I'm going to write the enies first to show you that it doesn't matter which one you write. You can write the enies or the outies. It wouldn't matter. So nitrate is going to go and hang out with potassium. And again, I write the potassium first and then I write the nitrate because it's a metal and then the non-metal, right? Ionic is a cation and then the anion. Um, potassium has a plus one charge because it's a group 1A. Nitrate, polyatomic ion, it has a minus one charge, okay? And PB is going to hang, and it's going to go and hang out with iodide. So I'm going to have a PBI2 over here. Again, why is it PBI2? Because now I has a minus one charge, is an halogen group. And remember, again, we did this last time, that what kind of PB do I have? PB could be plus two or could be plus four. Now, which PB is it here? Because I have a two over here. I know nitrate is minus one. It's a polyatomic ion. It only has one possible charge. So the two had to come from the PB, right? Let me show you one more time. So the two over here had to come from the PB to balance the equation out. So the PB, the charge for PB is plus two. We had we have lead plus two here. One more time again, the reason is because there's a two here. We know nitrate is one. Yeah, if we cross multiply the charges, the two had to come from the PB. Because for ionic compound, you have to balance the formula. You have to balance the charges. Don't forget that. For ionic compound, you have to balance the charges. Repeat that five times. Um, so then over here, so again, PB is plus two, I is minus one. We cross multiply the charges and that's what we get. So far, so good. Okay, so I'm going to rewrite this nicer. Again, we've already gone over this. That's why I'm going over it a little bit faster. All right, now the next thing you have to do, you have to balance the entire equation. Uh, how do we balance the entire equation? There is one PB here, one PB, two nitrate, one nitrate. So I'm going to add a two over here. Now I have two nitrate and then two potassium. So I'm going to add a two over here. Okay, now I have two potassium, two potassium, two I, two I. This is balanced. This is my molecular equation. This is my molecular equation. Okay, now we said that lead to nitrate is a white solid. Potassium iodide is a white solid. If I add these two white solids together, what do I have? Nothing. I have a mess. Okay, so these are two white solids. If I add these two white solids together, I have nothing but a mess. Now, what do we need? We need water to make this reaction go. We need water as a medium to facilitate this reaction. All these reactions, double replacement reaction, are going to be happening in water. Because of that, we have to look at the solubility rules to see what happened to each compound in water. You ready? You have the solubility rule in front of you? Let's do it. Let's do nitrate. What happened to that in water? Is it going to be soluble or not soluble in water? Uh, let to nitrate. What do you think? Uh, nitrates, nitrate, acetate, chloride, and iodide, uh, iodates. They are soluble, no exception. Yes, nitrate, soluble, no exception. So what that means is it's going to be soluble in water and it's going to break up into ions. It's going to be soluble, it's going to break up into ions because we talked about it here. Based on the solubility rules, if the salt or bases are soluble, they will dissociate and break into ions. So this is going to break into ions. So I have PB plus two. Now when it breaks up, I have two nitrate. So when it breaks up, I'm going to have two nitrates, right? When it breaks up, I'm going to have two nitrates. All right, potassium iodide. Is that going to break up or not break up? Hopefully you don't even look at the solubility rules. You go, whoa, K is group 1A. Group 1A 
they're all dissociated, right? They, they're soluble. You see group 1A, don't even think about it. Yes, this is going to break up. So it's going to break up into ions. Now, how many, because I have two potassium iodide, when everything breaks up, you end up having two potassium and you end up having two iodine. When everything breaks up, you end up having two of each. So it's going to be 2K plus and 2I minus. So far, so good. Okay. Now, let's go to the product. Potassium nitrate. Is that going to break up or not break up? Don't look at your solubility rule. Tell me quickly. Yes, because potassium, all 1A group, they break up. And all nitrates break up. So this is definitely going to break up in water. Now, I have 2 potassium nitrate. So I end up with 2K plus and 2 nitrate. So far, so good. Okay. Now, lead 2 iodide. Is that going to break up or stay together? Um, there is no rule for lead, but there's a rule for iodide. And again, as long as you find a rule for one of them, that's what matters. Chloride, I, chlorides, bromides, iodides are soluble, except next to copper, silver one, gold one, mercury one, and PB plus two. So what do you think? It says it's soluble, except if it's next to one of these guys, that would make it to be insoluble, right? So, and is the iodide right now is next to PB. So, yeah, that's going to be insoluble. So, PBI2 led to iodide is insoluble. This is my total ionic equation. Now, the last thing we have to do is spectator ions. You're going to cross out the ones that look exactly the same on both sides. What are they? I have two nitrate, two nitrates. They have to look exactly the same. On both sides, I will be going to cross them out. Now we're going to rewrite the rest of them, the one that will not cross out, PB plus 2. Now put the AQs in solids, put the phases on them now for net ionic. I have 2I minus AQ goes to PB I2. This one didn't break up, it's solid. Yay! This is our net ionic equation. A couple things so you don't lose points. Uh, for net ionic, put the phases, right? If they, they break up and dissolve in water, they're AQ. AQ means dissolve in water. AQ means dissolve in water. This is solid because it did not, means it did not dissolve in water, okay? I want to repeat that one more time. So EQ means dissolved in water. If you dissolve in water, you're going to get an AQ. So far, so good. Okay, now, when things break up, when things break up in water, they break up into ions. So it's very key, it's key for you to not forget to put the charges because if you don't put the charges, then it's not going to work out because it doesn't break up into PB, it breaks up into PB plus 2. It doesn't break up into nitrate, it breaks up into NO3 minus 2. It breaks up into ions. It breaks up into ions. So don't forget that when it breaks up, it breaks up into ions. How are we good so far? Breaks up into ions. Don't forget that. All right, so far so good. Now, um, uh, not in, in a couple in, in a week, I'm gonna do a demo for you guys. Um, now, I'm gonna do a demo for actually this reaction over here. So what I want you to do, I actually want you to Google. You have, you probably have your phone next to you. Let's be real. So Google lead to iodide for me and tell me what lead to iodide look like. So actually, I want you to Google that and tell me what lead to iodide look like. If you do it, you're probably going to say that it looks like it is a bright yellow solid. And Google it and actually look at the pictures on Google. It's a bright yellow solid. Remember that. We're going to do a demo and then you'll see um, if we actually get a bright yellow solid when we add two white solids together in water. So far, so good? Okay. Are you ready for the next one? We're going to just keep doing practice problem until you get really, really good at this. All right. Here is our next one. The next one we're going to do is PBNO34 plus NiCl2 going to PBCl. Oh, no, no, no. I, I, uh, just kidding. All right, you have to figure out the product. Okay, so here again, what I have, I have two ionic compounds. Two ionic compounds are going to switch partner and they're going to do a double replacement reaction. 
double replacement reaction and you want to go faster because you got this down. In is with in is, out is with out is. PB is going to leave nitrate and go and hang out with Cl. Do you agree? Leave nitrate, go and hang out with Cl. It doesn't matter if you write the out is first or the in is first. It doesn't matter if you write the out is first or the in is first. Sometimes I, the last problem, I wrote the in is first. It doesn't matter. Okay, the PB is going to go and hang out with Cl. So I'm going to come over here. PB is going to go and hang out with Cl. Now remember, you have to rebalance the equation. You have to rebalance the equation, right? Okay. <clears throat> now, here, Cl is a halogen. It is minus 1, okay? Now, PB could be plus 2 or plus 4. Which PB do I have here? I want to look over here, and I want to say, hey, there is a 4 over here. I know nitrate is minus 1. When I cross-multiply the charges, the 4 had to come from the... PB. Therefore, I had to come from the PB. Okay. <clears throat> so, PB is PB plus 4 and CL is minus 1. You have to cross multiply the charges. You have to cross multiply the charges. If we do that, we get PB CL 4. So, don't forget that. You have to, for ionic compound, you have to balance the charges. You have to balance the charges. Don't forget that. You have to balance the charges. Now, the in is nitrate is going to go with Ni. So, nitrate is going to leave the partner and it's going to go with Ni. So, if that's the case, I'm going to write the Ni first because you write the metal first. And then I'm going to write the non-metal, the NO3 after that. Okay? Now, you know the charge in NO3 is minus 1. It's a polyatomic ion. It has a fixed charge. What's the charge of the nickel over here? Um, so, you know that Cl is minus 1. So the two had to come from the Ni. The, the two had to come from nickel. So that would be plus two, okay? All right, if I cross multiply the charges, I get Ni, NO3, two. You guys are good so far? So I'm going to rewrite this equation. So P lead for nitrate plus nickel chloride going to lead for chloride plus nickel to nitrate. We're good so far. Now you have to balance this whole equation. Don't forget that. To balance this whole equation, what do we do? I have, let me see. I have, um, I have one PB. I have one PB. I have four nitrate. I have two nitrate. So I have to put a two over here. So now I have four nitrate, four nitrate. Now I have two nickel, one nickel here. So I added two over here. Two nickel, two nickel. 4Cl, yay, 4Cl. This is my molecular equation. Now, we know that these things are happening in water, so take out your solubility rules and tell me, lead for nitrate, is that going to be soluble or not soluble? What do you think? Hopefully, you remember this from memory that all the nitrates are soluble, right? So yeah, this is going to break up into ions. Now, one thing I want to show you really quickly. So, basically, you have a PB that has a plus four charge, right? And ionic compound is a, is a attraction of charges. And this is very simplified picture, but it kind of it helps you to make sure you don't make mistakes. And then you have four nitrate that is attracted to this, right? You have a PB plus four, and you have four nitrate minus one that is attracted to this. When, when they're dissolved in water, water breaks them up water breaks them up when water breaks them up you end up when water breaks them up you have a pb plus four and then you have four nitrate right because water is going to break them up water is going to break them up when water is breaking them up and water is going to surround these you're going to end up having one pb and then one two three four nitrate and this is why when they're dissolving in water the water is going to break them up into ions i'm going to have pb plus four and i'm going to have four nitrate. I wanted to show you this. I know it's a little high schoolish, but I want to make sure you really understand it. So when they break up into water, when they break up into ions, now what I end up having, I'm going to end up having four NO3 minus and one PB plus four because they broke up into ions, right? They broke up and the water is going to surround all of them. So far, so good? Okay. Just a little visual so you don't forget that you put a four over here because when you break it up you have one pb and you have four nitrate 
Now, remember, you don't break this one up because this is a polyatomic ion and that's how it exists. That's a polyatomic ion and that's how it exists, right? You knew that. Good. Okay, nickel two chloride. Look at your solubility rules. Would that break up or not break up? If you look at the solubility rules, that would actually break up because chloride, uh, bromide, and iodide are soluble and nickel is not one of the ones that is going to make it to be insoluble. So this is actually going to break up and dissolve. So I have 2Ni plus 2, okay, because I have 2 nickel chloride. Now when, when nickel chloride breaks up, I have 2 chlorides, but I have 2 nickel chlorides. So how many chlorides do I end up with? I end up with 4 Cl minus. I end up with 4 Cl minus. Okay, we're good so far. Okay, now let four chloride. Is that going to break up or not break up? What do you think? Take out your solubility rule. If I look over here, so chlorides, bromine, and iodide are soluble except next to these guys, right? Except next to these guys. Now, this is where it gets a little tricky. If chloride was next to PB plus 2, that would make it to be insoluble. But in this case, it's not next to PB plus 2. What is it next to? It's next to PB plus 4 because the PB is plus 4. PB plus 2 would make it insoluble, but not PB plus 4. So it end up being actually soluble because PB plus 2 would make it insoluble. But here we have PB plus 4. We have PB plus so it's going to break up. This is actually going to break up into Pb plus 4. And how many Cl? 4 Cl minus. Beautiful. Okay. Nickel 2 nitrate. Is that going to break up? Yeah. All nitrates break up, right? Remember that. All nitrates break up. There is no, there is no exception. So that is also going to break up. When it breaks up, what is it going to break up into? It's going to break up into 2 Ni plus 2. How many nitrates? Be careful. It would be 4 nitrate. It would be 4 NO3 minus because I have 2 nickel 2 nitrate. 1 nickel 2 nitrate has 2 nitrate. I have 2 of them. So it would be 4 all together. Okay. So what's going to happen? What are my spectator ions? They all are my spectator ions, don't they? They all break up in water and they end up not finding anyone. They don't form any precipitate. They don't form any precipitate. So what does that mean? My total ionic equation equals net ionic equation. They all broke up into ions, but they ended up not forming an insoluble solid. So nothing really happens. And this is, I took this from an old exam because when we put this on the exam, Everyone started questioning themselves. I was like, oh, that cannot be it. Something has to, has to stay solid. Sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Sometimes you add it, they just all dissolve in water and they don't really form anything. And they just, the total equals net. So this is, this is possible, right? This is possible. They all break up into ions and they don't form any precipitate. Um, so if that happens on the exam, don't question yourself and try to put things together when you know it's not that's not the case. All right, let's do one. Okay, are you ready for the next problem? We're going to do, let's do the next problem. And I want to give you two take-home problems, okay? All right, so the next problem that I want to do, and this one should be easy because we've done something similar last lecture. HClO4 plus HClO4 plus NaOH, okay? Now, one thing I forgot to mention, I want to go back to these, not to this one, to the one before. So when you have this double replacement reaction, what you end up having, you end up having a precipitate. So this is a precipitation reaction because you end up with a precipitate. Now, this one, the same way, you ended up with a precipitate, right? So it's a PPT reaction because what you end up with, you end up with a PPT. You end up with a precipitate reaction. So this is a precipitate reaction. This is also, we end up with a PPT, right? So this is a precipitation reaction. 
Um, this one, no, there was no PPT, it was four, okay? Now, let's go, let's go to this one. This one is an acid and base. So we said we have two types of double replacement reaction. One is precipitation, so you form a precipitate at the end, and sometimes you don't form a precipitate and there's, there's nothing going on. There's, and the other time is an acid-base neutralization. This is an acid-base reaction. How do I know that? Because HClO4, that's an acid, right? Because it starts with H. NaOH, that's a base because it's going to end up with OH. Now, acid-base reaction, we said acid-base are technically still under ionic, so we do a double replacement reaction with them. So it's the same thing as before. In is with in is, out is with out is, but it just has a different name. The double replacement reaction, subcategory, acid-base neutralization. Okay. Now, H is going to go with OH. ClO4 is going to go with sodium. I'm going to write the in is first. If I write the in is first, that means the sodium is going to go with ClO4. I write the sodium first because that's my cation. It's a plus one charge. ClO4, polyatomic ion, is minus one charge. So far, so good. Okay. Now, we said that H is going to go with OH. We talked about this last time. H has a plus one charge. OH has a minus charge. We said that's kind of ghetto. You don't write down HOH. What is that? That is H2O. That is H2O. And you're going to be sophisticated and you're going to write down H2O. So far, so good. And is this reaction balanced? It's actually balanced. I'll give you an easy one. HClO4 plus NaOH, acid-base reaction. I get NaClO4 plus H2O. Now, the same thing as before. Again, it's a double replacement reaction. We're going to look at the solubility rules to see what happens in each compound in water. HClO4, is that going to be soluble or not soluble? Remember, this is an acid. Solubility rules does not apply for acid. So what do you have to do? Remember, we said all acids are soluble. Okay, I'm going to repeat this again. All, all acids are soluble. But strong acids, they would completely, they would break up into ions, right? They would break up into ions. And when you have weak acid, only a few would break up into ions, right? So in that case, keep them together. So break up into ions, break them up. And for this class, what I would do, I would keep them together keep them together because only a few, only a few would break up, okay? All right, so all acids are soluble, right? If you have a strong acid, you would break up into ion. It would have 100% dissociation, right? 100% it would break up into ions. Now, if you have a weak acid, keep them together because only a few would break up. So for this class, we're just going to keep them together. So far, so good. We're just going to keep them together. Now, HClO, HClO, strong acid or weak acid? Go back to your rules right here. These are the strong acid. Is HClO one of them? That is one of them. So this is the only way you know if you have a strong acid or weak acid. If is one of these six acid, strong acid, otherwise is weak acid. So HClO is a strong acid, which means it would completely break up. So all acids are soluble. If you see a strong acid, break it up. If you see a weak acid, keep it together because a strong acid, they will all break up. Weak acid, only a few would break up, mostly stay together. So we're just gonna keep it together for this class. Now, NaOH, don't even look at the solubility rules. You know this. What do you think? NaOH, Na is group 1A. What does that mean? It would break up into ions. Yes, good job. All right, how about over here? NaClO4, don't look at the solubility rules. You know this. Na is 1A. Every time you have group 1A, you are going to break it up. How about H2O? Would H2O break up? Oh, no. You're made from H2O. Hopefully that it doesn't break up, right? No, H2O doesn't break up. H2O stays together. Do not break up water. Do not break up water. All right, we're good so far. Now, what are my spectator ions? They have to look exactly the same on both sides. 
Hopefully you're showering right now. That's sodium and ClO4 minus. So I'm going to rewrite the rest. H plus AQ. I'm going to put all the AQ plus OH minus because AQ means dissolved in water goes to H2O liquid. Water will always be a liquid. So far, so good. Now, one thing I mentioned before, and I mentioned last class, was that every time you have an acid-base neutralization reaction, your product is water. So every time you have an acid-base neutralization reaction, your product, one of your product is, is water. Water is a product. Because we said water is neutral because it's made from acid and it's made from base, which is kind of cool. Yeah? All right. So this was an acid-base neutralization reaction and water was one of your products. Ready for your take-home problems. I'm going to give you two hard take-home problems. Hard or good. Here's your first problem. You're going to phosphoric acid plus calcium chloride. You're going to write down the molecular equation, the total ionic, ionic equation, and the net ionic equation. Okay? That's the first one. The second one, oh, I want to be tricky. I want to give you the name, not the formula. Lead for nitrite plus sulfuric acid. So for these two, what I want, I want you to, so these are your take home problem. Even though you're home right now, I don't know what to call it. Stay home problem. Um, I want the molecular equation, total net ionic equation, and net ionic, total ionic equation, and net ionic equation for all of these. Sounds good? Do this, do this, and then we're going to go over it next lecture. Nice job. I'll talk to you guys next time.